Ladies and gentlemen, you know this, right? We have a regular on this show. Uh, I love him. Fucking hilarious. I love this, this guy. guy has a style of comedy in which I can honestly say I've never really seen anything like it before. Very innovative. He might be one of the greatest things happening in all of improvisational, loose, lying stand up comedy right now. He's definitely one of my favorite comedians to watch. He's got a lot of buzz around him. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you one of my favorite comedians, our regular. This guy writes and performs a brand new 60 seconds every week. It's the one and only William Montgomery. Here we go. Here he is. The monster. I need you guys to make no a lot of noise one Yo, more what time. What the fuck is going on? The fuck is going on? So uh, my dad's been telling everyone he teaches self-defense classes, and every time I'm just like, Dan, it's just me, you, and Mom wrestling around up in y'all's fucking room. Quit getting me in those holds. That's my best joke. It scares me. Y'all didn't laugh at that. Um, I don't know if y'all have seen Honey, I Shrunk the Kids yet, but that glitter scene... That's my best joke, so it scares me. Y'all aren't laughing at that. Um, so uh, I don't know if y'all heard about that guy that got beat up out front of the grocery store by all the black belts. Y'all are in for a treat. This is probably my best impression. Uh, that is the, the guy who confuses black belts with black people. Wow, William Montgomery, doing it again. Woo! Came Tony, in with a lot of mind? energy. Guns a blazing, lots of energy from the top. Dialed it back as he went on. This was an interesting approach. Guns a blazing. I'm trying to have fun tonight. Uh, ten years ago, my aunt Mary died uh, on July 4th, so I'm trying to sort of keep it cool. It was a a grisly scene. There's yeah. blood everywhere. She got cut in half on a railroad track. She had. How did diabetes. They... Oh, wait. She had, wait a second. So she had diabetes, and yeah. then on July 4th, she's doing what? Walking across the railroad track? She was. She couldn't hear. The diabetes took the, uh, the ability for her to hear. She was on a train track. I was with my brother, Vance, just on the side of the hill. Wow. That's it. Aunt Mary, hang on a second. Just sort of what haunts me is I was on that side of the hill. I saw Aunt Mary, her abdomen on one side of the tracks, her legs on the other. Oh. She got cut in fucking half. I did CPR on her. I tried to save you her. Did. <laughs> you did. Which half did you do CPR on? The top half or the bottom half? Her bottom half. <laughs> God, we are, we're, we are something else, William. Man. Yeah, it was a horrible struggle. I can't Let me take that one more time. It was a horrible uh, struggle. At first, I thought her favorite holiday was Easter. Turns out it was uh, July 4th, and she was walking on those train tracks. Yeah. Tim, the only reason I don't, y'all, I think are going to appreciate this. Tim, I did a lot of research on you. I heard about your uncle that got cut in half on the train tracks. Uh, it was a very, it was kind of expected. We expected it. Uh, <laughs> to be honest, it wasn't shocking, but it still hurt him, hurt him. Just yeah. slow motion, yeah. MIA paper planes in the background. Yeah. That was what was playing in the background. Just yes. in the background, yes. Tim and I in the bushes, just watching him getting cut in half. That was his favorite song, Paper Planes, by yeah. MIA. Yeah. Yeah. Just Tim and I in the bushes, just watching the grisly scene, yes. Tim screaming at me. Yes. Both of us Give masturbating. We don't know why, but. Yeah. Great yeah. song. It's a great it, song. It's just like that. And that's Tim, will you get up here for one second? Will you yeah. do the dance we did? Oh, oh, you yeah. guys did a oh, dance. Put that before? song one more time. They did a dance. Yeah. It, it was as out. my uncle was being uh, severed. Yeah, they they did a <laughs> dance together. It turns out here it is. They're about to do it. A little more volume on that music. Let's see what happens here. Hey oh. Tim, is your uncle cut in half? Oh my God, that sucks. He had kids. 
And then, and then what was the He had kids? He had kids, and now they're not going to have a dad, or they'll have two dads. Hold on. What's my kid doing here? Let's give it up for uh, Travis. Travis. <laughs> William, what was the dance that you guys did? Yeah, this was it, actually. This was our dance. <laughs> Just us standing by yeah. the bush. We had been in a car accident the week earlier, and we're both paralyzed. I can't feel my fucking legs at the time. <laughs> <sighs> wow. All right. This uh, was the dance. That was incredible. Hey, Tony? Yes, Joelberg, Joel Jimenez. So, so the woman that's been trying to hire William uh, reached out to me and asked me if she should bring paperwork tonight. Yeah, William. Uh, well, that woman should be in jail. We have been trying to get you a new job. Uh, is that something that uh, you're ready to do? Are you going to quit your job at the self-storage unit? I'll just be quite frank. I refuse to work at Kmart. They're trying to get me a gig working no. the IC machine at Kmart. I can't drink those fucking things. No, it's not Kmart, William. No, I don't think. I don't think. Kmart. Oh, it's not Kmart. Yeah, no, it's not Kmart. Oh, whoa! My apologies. <laughs> See, that's my best. It scares me. Y'all aren't laughing more. I've really worked on that face. Hold on, you're. What does a woman want to hire you to do? She wants. I'm. I am a fan of walking dogs. She heard about that. She heard about a couple years ago. She wants him to be a uh, weed delivery driver. Yeah, a weed delivery person. Yeah. Okay. Even well. though you do look like you would be one of those dog walker guys. That looks like a fitting job for you. Like dog and just pe- walking up to the door. I'm fucking sick. I'm going to walk slow. <laughs> That's you yelling at dogs? Are you yelling at dogs or the people that own the dogs? I don't just me yelling that. at my aunt, just horrified, knowing I can't save her. Can you do a? Can you do an all-out impression of the sec of the exact moment? I want you to look out there and pretend like you're in the bushes again. It's July Fourth. There's fireworks, and the train comes. Your aunt gets hit. Show this audience exactly what it was like for you. Mary, what the fuck are you doing? I love you so much. Oh, Why are you walking on the tracks? Oh, it's going to hit her. Here it comes. You can't hear. Mary! Oh. oh, my God. She's in two pieces. Now what ha- Now what'd you do? Just me looking over at my brother Vance. Vance, I don't know if we could. <laughs> That's what you did? Yeah, I said, Vance, I don't know if we can save her. She... Had diabetes for six years. I don't know if y'all are familiar with that disease, but it really <laughs> sort of takes the taste out of your taste buds. It sort of takes the treble out of your ears. Wow. All right. Well, William. Um, <laughs> wow. This was another... She's in a better place yeah. now. For sure. Uh, she's on the right side of the tracks. Yeah. She's got it all figured out now. William, I really hope that you take this job that they're offering you. It's going. I think to she may be here tonight, actually. So. Yeah, I th- I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure they're going to follow up with you tonight. Listen, Williams. don't take it if you don't want to fucking I, take it. I'm starting to think he what doesn't I, want. What I worry thing. about, it's yeah. not full time, and with my current job, I have health insurance. Yeah. I worry but about. But William, that. you never use your health insurance. We've talked about this. So there's a thing that it, your dad has instilled in your head that you need health insurance you because don't. he feels like he can't protect Y'all you. Y'all don't repeat this. Something that scares me. I've been horribly unhealthy for years now. Yeah, And when I am putting deodorant under my arms, there's a little spot that hurts a little bit. Isn't that where your lymph nodes are? Yes. I'm worried I have cancer. Oh. Well, when's the last time you saw a doctor? Why don't, it, why it's don't, cured, hold, remember? Hold on. You have to, that's a different... Not all cancers are the same, Brian. Yeah. yeah you have to... Is that true, what you're saying? Totally is true. Is there a doctor in the house tonight? Is there anybody with any nursing or Dr. medical Kalani? experience? Dr. Kalani? Clearly not. Probably. Is, there, is there a single doctor anywhere of any kind? Dr. Kalani? Is there really a doctor over there? No? All right. I was just figuring we could check William for cancer. But that would also be very weird if we found out William had cancer on this show. <laughs> that would be crazy. <laughs> the bad case scenario would be one of the yeah. saddest moments. That would be a fun, <laughs> fun improv challenge, you know? <laughs> Zipper How good like, are we? He's got AIDS. Go! Well, William, he plays I, the Ouija board a bunch. It does a great Schwarzenegger impression. William, the catch with you work in he that storage... He plays Monopoly... The catch with William working the storage unit job is that he absolutely can never do the road. 
at all, ever. He can never do any gig outside of Los Angeles for life if you keep doing that job. Uh, so what do I, I do? I implore you to go get a checkup, get your lymph nodes checked, and if you don't have cancer, get the fuck out of the self storage unit and get her, get the take the job. Yeah, me with the lady tonight. There he goes, William Montgomery, everybody. Or just take a couple of days off once in a while. Yeah, a two week notice. Give a couple. Yeah, they of days don't. Off. They don't. They don't even let him do that. That's really? the thing. Yeah, they don't let him like move his well, schedule. Need to have a it's sit a, down. It's a very bizarre job that he has, but of course he's a wild man. And, uh, on every single episode, he writes and performs a brand new 60 seconds every week. You've seen this young man before. We're absolutely in love with him. He's an improvisational guru. I'm excited to see what new minute he has this week. He's truly one of my favorite things in all of comedy. It is the one, the only, William Montgomery. <laughs> Come on, guys. Make some fucking noise. Yo, what the fuck is going on? My brother's here! So I've been uh, wearing scrubs recently. You know people think you're a doctor. I find myself in the CVS bathroom with just Egyptian bitches coming up to me being like, hey, my arm hurts. Bitch, I can't fix your arm. I'm not a doctor. So uh, everything's been going pretty good in my life recently, other than my addiction to whippets. I don't know what to do with all the canisters. I don't. I don't know what to do. Um, Antarctica, the poor man's Japan. That's an ESPN shirt. I I work for ESPN. That's a. If I'm going to be honest, a lot, of, a lot of people say I look like Bonnie Raitt. <laughs> you want something to talk about? I want something to talk about in the CVS bathrooms. There you go. Brand new minute from William Montgomery. Did it again. Came out with an interesting William look this week. This is very exciting. I like this new stepfather version of uh, William. I Montgomery. actually I ended up becoming a uh, a teacher in Memphis. Um, You've been teaching in Memphis this week. I have for six months. Uh, sort of rewind fifteen years. I had a student named Timothy in Oklahoma. He decided to try to get involved with the special forces. He didn't make it. What? He started reading a bunch of books. He sort of got disenchanted with the government. What? He got a rider van. He filled it with explosives. I told him not to. Wait a second. Are you? He talking, ended up. You're talking, ended up in front of the Oklahoma Federal Building. Oh my goodness! This Twelve p.m. <laughs> you were his teacher. I was his teacher. I taught him Timothy Spanish. Timothy McVeigh. I'm pretty sure that was in like 91 or 92 or something like that. What worries me is when I was his teacher, he was like, hey, William, I don't know how to conjugate this verb. And I just stared him in his fucking eye. And I was like, William, you mean Guillermo? I love it. <laughs> William, you do this weird thing where sometimes you'll end your jokes staring right into Dane Cook's soul for some yeah. reason. Yeah. Hey, Dane. You know what I'm excited about? I don't know if you heard the news this past week, but the new Disney movie, The Little Mermaid, there's actually going to be a black Little Mermaid. Y'all give it up. Baking soda. Wow, that is very exciting. First black Dane, here's my point. First black I'm so woman to uh, be able to swim, right? Okay, come on, guys. It's Monday night. We're not on. Yeah, a hey, network. bitch, you were at CVS last night asking me about band aids. Hold on, we gotta check in with Chroma Chris Flea for a second. Here, I believe you pronounced it wrong. It's gonna be called Lil Mermaid. <laughs> Chroma Chris, one for one. I'll, it. I'll be quite frank. Uh, during the the earthquake this past week, yeah. 
I found myself just buried under rubble, weirdly what? enough, <laughs> listening uh, to Brick by uh, somebody yeah. help me on that. Ben Folds 5. Ben Folds 5. Ben Folds 5, Brick. Yeah. And I called up Chris, and he was like, hey, William. And I was like, it's gear. Uh, <laughs> I'm working on callbacks, Dan. Guillermo. Dane, my point is about the Black Little Mermaid. I think. Will you play it? Do you mind? Yeah, go ahead. For I think my best joke, and again, when I heard about Ariel being maybe a girl from Memphis, maybe from Birmingham, <laughs> maybe from Michigan, her dad is a professor of engineering up at Michigan, and just a little cut scene of her down under the water messing around are with you, her things and her my point is I think my joke one wait, of my wait, best wait, jokes wait a second hold on a second here's my best joke here's you, my wait, best wait, joke but, but does this have to do with what you were just talking about oh totally okay go ahead just looking at the comb thinking oh my god it doesn't have enough bristles and just right then a slow motion cut scene of me hitting some Filipino girl in the CVS bathroom. I'm sick of it. I have fucking Speedo goggles on, trying to do the fog off with my forefingers. Here's my only point. Y'all are in for a treat. I think my best joke is going to do better once she becomes the Little Mermaid. Here it is. Um, Okay. Here's my impression of the Black Little Mermaid. Oh, my God. You're going to do an impression? You want thank you, Bob's? I got 20. She's hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I don't know. If... What the fuck did you just say? Oh I have chlamydia. Wait, is this still the impression or is this you? I have chlamydia. You do. Is this the Little Mermaid? Or I you? can't feel my legs. Oh, oh, it's the Little Mermaid. She has chlamydia. Hey, chlamydia. <laughs> Fucking flea. She also gets crabs. Wow. Fucking hey, Chroma Chris, I swear to God, when I was underneath the rubble, trying to touch your fingers, just sort of looking for solace, amongst another human and you did your hand away just brick just Hold on playing a and uh-huh. I'll be quite frank if y'all really think about this song it's about an abortion it is is that true William totally have you ever had it have you ever had an abortion have you ever ever had a, been with a girl a and guy. she had to get get an abortion what scares me is i picture me telling my parents a dress and then right after that saying yeah i had an abortion and just a slow motion cut scene maybe <laughs> mia paper planes playing in a doctor Wait. putting some sort of a tube up my butthole just saying doctor i'm a boy I can't have a kid. Oh, wait, what? <laughs> you, 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 wait. Okay. Is this all the Little Mermaid still? <laughs> <laughs> Flounder is the doctor just putting slowly his gloves on. Sebastian uh, is getting the tube uh, out. Uh, uh, Wow. No, but seriously, Timothy McVeigh, when I taught him, I had a bad feeling about him. I'll be quite frank. He killed a bunch of kids. He killed a bunch of families. He killed police officers. He didn't William. care. William, 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 William. Last week you told us that your aunt got hit by a train and split into two. You said you tried to do mouth and mouth to mouth to save her, on the bo- but, you, but you did it on the bottom half. Uh... It was an amazing moment. She called me the next day and she was like, 
She's, I don't get who that guy is up there talking about. Basically, my point is, I was in... Your aunt called you the day after you did that? <laughs> William, I don't know what's real and what's not anymore. We've, we've gone to the next level here. Uh, William, how's the job at the self-storage unit been treating you? It's pretty good. I had a couple 10 by... Is that funny? Are we... I've been having a real good time. I've, I've, I will let y'all in on a little secret. Yeah. There are coughing pills called Coracetin. I'm on five of them right now. I'm badly addicted. I can't stop. I tried to break into Wendy's last night. Hey, you tried to break into a Wendy's? So what happened? I got the Dave stubble. <laughs> You broke in and you made it yourself? And there was a lady worker in there, and I was like, hey, bitch, get to the fucking bathroom. What are you, Filipino? I don't get it. I don't care. What I'm you... on. And then what, what'd you do to this Filipino girl? Can you put brick on? No, no, no. There's no more brick. Brick's gone. Basically, I got her in the bathroom, and the closer I looked in her eyes, the more I thought, oh, my God, is that Patricia from Memphis? Y'all, I apologize. I'm working on jokes. I'm working right. on it. Patricia. All right. William, William, one last thing before I let you go. Uh, this has become insane. Um, is there anything that you'd like? Have you gotten any... One of the things we like that you do sometimes on the show is you acknowledge your haters out there and you teach them a little less. Is there anything you'd like to say to any internet trolls or anything? Yeah, what I would like to say is the bitch-ass motherfucker cracker barrel kid 52. Just picture a cutscene of you and I on the Titanic. It's slowly <laughs> sinking. <laughs> And you bending over and me fucking you and you looking back being like, William, is it true you have chlamydia? And I whisper into your bitch ass ear, yeah, it is. Do you know how to swim? And I just force your face in the water. I drowned you. And I go from room to room just knowing I can kill a bunch of fucking people. No one's ever going to know. The ship's going down. It's made of steel. It hit an iceberg. It's a nightmare. Just Dane and I going room to room. I Dane putting it. on the handcuffs. That me is... fucking them. And Larry, my father, watches this. Larry, I apologize. I'm kidding. That is right. That is, he's talking to his father. He's letting them know that if he was on the Titanic it, when it was going down, he wouldn't murder a bunch of people. Wait, was I getting fucked on the Titanic? <laughs> I was getting fucked. What scares me? I just picture maybe a cutscene, maybe the uh, brick <laughs> by that guy playing, and me walking into a room just being like, Dane, oh my God, you're a formidable person. How'd you allow this person to chain you to the fucking bed. Why is he fucking you? William, and me just all right, hitting him all right. on the head. All right, William, I gotta stop you. I'm gonna stop you. How about a hand? Uh, William, I mean, he's just amazing. That's a real artist right yeah, there. he went overtime tonight. I just love it. <laughs> William just asked if he could open for him and then said he was kidding and then walked away. Make time. <laughs> he's so Woo! funny. He's a crazy yeah. man, Dane. He's a whole different so like, type of comedian. It was comedian. so linear and understandable. Yeah. It's is amazing. what I really. It was clarity. He wasn't wearing flip flops that time. Wait, I think. he the, hit the, a Filipino the, girl in the CVS bathroom. Mm -hmm. I remember the the first few times William was on, people were still a little bit confused here and there, and then all of a sudden we all realized, oh, he's lying all the time. Yeah. Yes. About everything, and it became this like whole new art form. It's yeah. like reverse stand-up comedy. And he does it off stage also. Like it'll be me and him talking in an alley, and then halfway through, I'm like, "You're lying to me, aren't yeah. you?" Like, it is shout out to impressive. his parents. 
What do you guys think? Should we go to this bucket one more time, huh? Yeah, shout out to Larry and Francis watching back in beautiful Memphis, Tennessee. We love you. They've been on this show before. They're a lot of fun. You'd be surprised. They're actually like normal, good people. And they made that little devil, that devil child. And we're back. Hey, that was great. Back to uh, the show. And our uh, regular is ready to go. He writes and performs a brand new minute every single week. Has an unbelievable uh, delivery style. An unbelievable... uh, Comedic style. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you one of my favorite top young rising comedians, the great William Montgomery, everybody. Here he comes. Very funny. (laughs) Here he is in the flesh. Come on, guys. William Montgomery. So I I just got accepted into DeVry's psychic program. Uh... (laughs) I knew I would. I'm a fucking psychic. Uh, Just not that good at it. So I've been uh, calling a bunch of classified ads recently. uh, Not really to buy anything, just to talk. And after about five minutes, they're always like, hold on, is this William? And I'm like, yeah, it is. You know I'm lonely. You know I used to live with my half-aunt. In Washington in the early 1980s, you know, she died when Mount St. Helens erupted. I think you'll like this next one. Uh, um, so, yeah, this is called Baseball. Oh, yeah. Thousand-yard stare from William Montgomery to close his set. Yeah, I'm sorry. I am horribly on edge. I'm little starstruck. Love you in Kangaroo Jack. Wait a second. I don't know what that means, William. Are you taking a shot? I don't know what Kangaroo Jack is. I'm kidding. It's my favorite film. Do you know? Even I'm know- good with it. I don't know. <laughs> uh, okay. How about one more time for William Montgomery? <laughs> So let's talk about it, William. DeVry Psychic. Is this true? It is. Yeah, I, I spent $20,000 on one of the opening tests. Uh, I was pretty sure I was going to pass. Uh, luckily, I did. Why don't, you, uh, why don't you do a reading on one of these uh, audience members? Maybe, uh, just, why don't you pick your, uh, pick your favorite? Hey, Anthony. Um, your name's Anthony, right? Yeah. Your name's Anthony, right? How's your leg doing? The the guy, by the way, fun fact, the guy he's talking to in the front row just looked back at him and said, we met two weeks ago. (laughs) Clearly, William remembers his name is Anthony. Is there someone else that you could do a reading? Hey, Spencer, how's your arm doing? It looks like your fingers are limp. Is it better? Oh, my God. This is a psychic that only asks people how his body parts are doing. (laughs) (laughs) Hello, Tyler. How is your ear feeling? Hey, Ralph, I see you crossing your ankles. Uh, What happened last (laughs) night? Did you break it? Ankles. He's his legs crossed. Uh, (laughs) What? Shouldn't you know what happened last night? (laughs) Yeah. Aren't you you the psychic? Are you giving these people a checkup? (laughs) Hey, Samantha, uh, do your neck back a little bit or your lymph nodes? Uh, Still swollen. Samantha is actually my cousin. Let's give it up. Wow. That actually is Samantha. I know. She reads Braille, which means she can't see. <laughs> oh, my goodness. William, very smart. Can you, do a, uh, can you do a reading for me? Tell me something that the people don't know about me. Perhaps expose something wild right now on the show. Go ahead. Tony, what scares me, I think you're in a similar boat as me. I eat a bunch of mac and cheese, a bunch of Wendy's, Dave's Doubles. I got the app. I'm worried about your heart health. I mean, it appears you're healthy. It appears I'm healthy. Uh, Y'all might not believe that with this gut situation. I've lost 50 pounds. Wow. Thank you all so much. Nordic track. Nordic? Yeah, it's a ski machine. You might be the most Nordic-looking guy that's ever been on a Nordic track. 
A ski machine. Ski machine. So Ian, uh, William lies about everything. Much like, he's, this is why I love him. He's an anomaly. Much uh-huh. like the opposite of the honest hooker. Mm-hmm. Uh, William just lies about everything and somehow it's still, he finds a way to make it work. Yeah, that, that, that works. A good liar or honest person. That's right. He's yeah. a great liar. Yeah. Why don't, is that Spencer or Stevens right there? That's an How's your eardrum doing? We were <laughs> messing around with the Q-tips last night. And you shove that motherfucker so deep in your ear. I was la- We were both laughing. William, what else has been? Uh, what else has been going on this week? Anything else crazy? Not a lot. I have a RC car now. I got it off Amazon. Uh, I have an Amazon Prime account. It's a, a, a one twentieth scale of an actual Porsche. It goes super fast. Scale miles per hour. It's going two hundred. <laughs> My goodness. Uh, yesterday, Michael Jefferson. Whoa. How are your ribs doing? We (laughs) really tumbled down the stairs last night. Are you doing better? Cool. (laughs) Wow. This is very impressive what you're doing. My mind is blown. How about uh, how about Ian? Do you have a reading for Ian? Ian, it just it's it's more of a memory of I'm really worried now. Just you and I in Nebraska, we, I used to open for Ian. I'm hoping after this you're really going to consider it again. You know I'm living in literally the sewers. I need a gig. I'm, I'm hurt. I'm lonely. Are you, are you asking him for work? Yeah, just, just consider yourself booked all year now. Don't worry. I got <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> Basically, we you're were in Lincoln, th- Nebraska, going in uh, uh, Bank of America's just holding them up at knife point. I had a couple of knives at the time. Ian was, you were throwing those suckers around. Where'd you learn how to do that? Hey, man. When you grow up in Nebraska, you know how it is. <laughs> <laughs> My goodness. So, William, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to break the wall. I'm going to break all the walls down here for a second. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share something with this audience. Last night, I had a spot here at the comedy store. You just so happened to be hanging out, and I chatted with you for a bit. Yeah. And uh, you mentioned to me that you've been seeing a girl lately for the first time. This crowd seems very intrigued now, and it seemed like you were being honest at the time, which surprised me. (laughs) I was. She is actually here tonight. The plan is afterwards. She has some really good liquid acid, and we're going to... Go back to Reseda. Maybe I'll take two squirts tonight. Wow. Wow. Uh, And just watch Tool music videos and have to pee real bad but refuse to go out of her bedroom. Is this Literally two hours in, yeah, out of an eight-hour ordeal. Is this girl's name Tokyo Cunt Punch by any (laughs) chance? Are you the guy that she thinks uh, loves her? Oh, you're the big baby, brown baby. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, I literally, I think I've, I've been very alone for 10 years. I think something that really sort of changed my mindset. If y'all see this gut I'm working with, I literally have Lyme's disease. I brought it up before. I Lyme's literally. Plural? Yeah, Lyme's disease. I was bit by multiple ticks. <laughs> How'd you get bit by ticks? I was out in the woods. I, w- I was with Ian in Nebraska. <laughs> I'm no fool, man. I bring someone who's more biteable than me. You know what I'm saying? I love but yeah, it. it turned into a horrible ordeal. This was like six months ago. It was really cold. It was freezing I cold. I had fun, too. I mean, it was a hell of a time. We were yeah, out man. in the woods. Well, Two person. T- <laughs> <laughs> well, William, you're so much fun, dude. I can't tell you how much I love having you on this show every single week. A new minute every week. It's well, incredible. thank you so much. There he goes, William Montgomery. Let's do something special here. We have a regular on this show. Every single week he writes and performs a brand new 60 seconds of stand-up comedy. Uh, 
so fun. I absolutely love this guy. He just did a Huntington Beach opening up for the with the whole Kill Tony band, and word on the street is that he fucking destroyed. Can he, I just say, uh, I've seen all of his sets here, and I haven't had a chance or an opportunity to see him do a full set ever, and I was uh, a very proud uh, partner of that guy. He was, uh, he was phenomenal in Huntington Beach. And the, this guy has a lot of buzz going around. Not only that, but there was a lot of word about his set here. He had a big set in the belly room and a sold-out show on Friday night where he absolutely destroyed and went over his time, and a lot of comedians got mad at him because oh, yeah. he was slaughtering, but this. over his time slot. He did about twice as long as he was allowed to do, but he fucking killed. The baby boy fucking killed. Oh, Ladies and gentlemen, you know him, you love him. It's the great William Montgomery, everybody! I'm <laughs> In case y'all were wondering, I did, in fact, get the job at Supercuts this past week. <laughs> Let's give it up for Pat Martinez. That is a female. She gave me the job. So I, uh, I have a pretty serious balloon fetish. I think the neck is my favorite part. It's probably one of the best jokes I've written recently that scares me. Y'all didn't laugh. I don't know if y'all thought about it, but is all that sex on nature DVDs consensual? Because I'll be quite frank, I know a meerkat named Richard Yoplay who's been raping bitches since 05. He's out of control. He takes them to motel rooms. He has unconsensual sex. Okay. What a nightmare that was. I was trying to impress you tonight. I really enjoy your comedy. What a nightmare that was. Thank you. No. (laughs) William, stop it. No, you were like Zach Galifianakis meets uh, Brody Stevens. It was kind of interesting. I I like that. That was a big compliment. Yeah. Welcome back, William. How are you? Can you, William, what, what did I tell you about staring too deeply into the guest's eyes? I've had this talk with you. He does this, he does this sometimes, Greg. I do, I do apologize. I was with my cousin last night. We were playing the Ouija board, and I was like, is Greg Fitzsimmons going to like me? And it went to the yes thing, and I looked at my cousin Grace, and she was like, I think, but then this happens. I, I'll... I couldn't breathe last night for five minutes. Yeah, why? Why was that? I was holding my breath in a bathtub. (laughs) (laughs) Set a new record. I don't know if it's a world record or not. (laughs) William, you know, one of the fun things about your style is I can never tell what's true and what isn't. Uh, One of the interesting things that you do, do you really know a meerkat named Richard Yoplait? I wrote this down. So that I could, so that I wouldn't forget to ask you, how do you? I ha- do. Not a lot of people know it. His father was, in fact, Frank Yoplait of the uh, in the, the <laughs> yogurt magnate, super rich. Wait a didn't give a fuck. He literal. I was with him in '04 in Panama City Beach, Florida. We were giving bitches Tylenol. We were giving. Wait, wait, the wait, 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 William. Let me. <laughs> let's jump right back into that in a second. I want, don't don't lose that spot. You're telling me that Yoplait yogurt was started by a family of meerkats? It was in uh, Senegal, Africa. Not a lot of people know that. Uh, really nice family, but he, he sort of a bad seed. I don't know if y'all saw the movie uh, The Bad Kid. <laughs> It wasn't Wait, the bad guy, the, the one with Macaulay Culkin. Is that Culkin. the founder of Col- Yoplait on the line? <laughs> oh, wow. That's what Brian thinks a meerkat sounds like. <laughs> William, uh, so when's the last time you saw Richard Yoplait? I saw him three weeks ago. I was in the airport, uh, <laughs> Panama City, not down in Florida, but in Central America. He was... 
dosing people. He was giving people Advils, Tylenol. A meerkat. I'm, I'm still, I have to make sure one more time. This is a meerkat. A little meerkat, just <laughs> probably, I don't know, 13 inches long. Just He used to wear a helmet, bike helmet, and just dole out pills. And every time I'd be like, dude, people are going to know this is Advil. People are going to know this is Tylenol. It's Okay, so let's talk about something for a second here, William. You've been absolutely destroying in shows. You are uh, in a, in a, in a, 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 probably the craziest, most swamped comedy market there's ever been, where everybody's trying all these different things, and one thing that nobody can deny is that you're killing in shows, right? Now, what this has started, what I've noticed, what I've picked up on a little bit, is I've noticed a lot in the last... Why didn't more people fucking clap? <laughs> what in the fuck is go... Am I in Senegal right now? I'm colorblind! <laughs> All right, okay, Brian. Very good. So, uh, William... What I've noticed is a lot of people being, I've noticed this at a barbecue that I went to the other day. Ah. Yeah. Some people, I think, are starting to get jealous Mm. of you. Have you noticed this at all? It's interesting you brought up the deal on Friday. It was a nightmare. Adam's like, I'm not going to book you for a while. He's talking about the talent coordinator of the comedy store, who is a, is a, you know, di- he's dialed in. He knows every, everything about everybody. The fact that you're getting developmental spots is a great thing at this point. You've only been in L.A. a year and One a of half. the sexiest people in the whole entire Los Angeles area. I do a little bit of porn. I don't know if you all get on Pornhub. Uh, I'm so, one of the guys on the hand job videos. <laughs> so what did Adam tell you? And this was before or after your set? He was just like, William, you went over by four minutes. What's going on? I'm not booking you for a long time. That was his quote. That was his exact quote. That was his quote. Wow. And what killed me was the night before I got a D. Do you mind putting on uh, Ben Folds Brick? Oh, okay. This is an interesting uh, request. Uh. Truly what hurt me is the night before I was... I was drunk as fuck. I was on a bunch of Advil. I got a DUI. I got a DUI. I decided not to stop. I was on the freeway for three hours. I ran out of gas. I shot at the police. And literally the next day, he tells me that I don't have... I'm moving back to Memphis, y'all. I'm sick of this shit. (laughs) I've had enough. William, you say that every week. You even went long in the police chase. I did. It was. So what is this new, uh, this new look that we're seeing here? Is this something that we can expect to see more of? Is this? Did you find that somewhere? I heard you might have stole it from someplace. <laughs> this is called Hold Lady on, let's... Reebok Chic. <laughs> Wait, um, let's check in with uh, Detective Charles. Over yeah, there. I might have done a show with him on Friday night, and he stole from the theater that we were at. <laughs> oh, I wow. did. This is a stolen wig from the Pack Theater. Wow. I hope they don't oh my... find out. Wow, yeah, you really they incriminated on yourself by dropping the name. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Look at that. They might make you return that. Yeah. I, I mean, didn't have a good set. I was pissed. I thought I would steal something. We, we did a live podcast together. It was a hot car fire. Oh, wow, really? Oh, boy. What happened during the podcast? Oh, you'll see. Oh, boy. <laughs> William, I opened can, up with, yeah, can you keep that song going? I opened up with, uh, I want to give it up for my deceased younger brother. He was in movies such as The Naked Gun such as Anaconda. Yeah, you'll, you'll literally see it on the podcast as it's going to come out. And Greg, help me out right I'm I'm doing really bad. I was hoping there you'd are, sort of jump in and help. Just, there, there are, I wasn't sure which direction you were going in there. I was just waiting to take a cue from you there, but you were, go, you were zigzagging. You know, you ever notice on that on that one uh, that one painting where like what is it like Washington's coming over what the Delaware yeah, the crossing of the Delaware right and he always looks so regal but you know he's he's actually been on I'm sure he'd been sailing for some points probably been a rougher day I feel like this is probably what he actually looked like when he arrived 
<laughs> just a lot. Just pissed off about <laughs> England taxation without representation. Oh. I'm moving to America on that ship. I just miss scurvy. We have some limes. Is this your George Washington impression? It is. Uh, wow. Hello, sir. Walk the plank. <laughs> all right, all right. Okay. Well, William, anything else crazy happened this week that you want to talk about? Two weeks ago, I found out a stock I had for AOL went way up. I'm currently looking at my 2,000 shares. If I sold them right now, it'd be $300,000. I'm really thinking about that. I'm thinking about moving back down to Jackson, Mississippi. You're not even from Jackson, Mississippi. (laughs) Okie dokie. How about one more time, good and loud, for William Montgomery, everybody? He did it again. It's another fun 10 minutes of content with William. Ladies and gentlemen, we do have a regular. Woo! And every single week, he writes and performs a brand new 60 seconds. He doesn't get pulled out of the bucket. He has to do it automatically. And every single week, we have so much fun with him. We have an amazing cast of former regulars. Uh, you know, Weinshank, Congdon, Malcolm Hatchett, Ali Makovsky, now opening for Joe Rogan. Malcolm Hatchett, working with the great Justin Roiland. And this guy's potential is just out of this world. He cracks me up every single fucking week with his unorthodox style. I present to you the great and powerful William Montgomery, everybody. Yes. Here he comes. Oh, my God. Here he is. Come on, make some noise for William, everyone. What's up, y'all? I used to play a flip cup before my immune system got compromised. The rumors are true. I have strep throat and AIDS. Let me hear y'all make some noise if you ever go to theme parks just to look at the kids. So I've been going to a bunch of theme parks recently. Uh, I go because people don't realize I'm looking at the Asian kids unable to get on the roller coaster. I only uh, go to the psychics who can tell me my past. (laughs) But seriously, I do have strep throat. I think something is also wrong with my adenoids. I'm currently in a rap group called Adenoids. Jay-Z told me to tell that joke. Did he? He did. Yeah, what'd you do? I did a lot. When I discovered I had HIV, I went to a clinic at first. I was, I was somewhere outside of Phoenix. I didn't necessarily trust uh, just the doctor in there, some guy named Mark Peterson. Okay. Um, how about a hand for William, everybody? I sort of, sort of kept his... Uh, minute going a little bit longer than maybe I uh... so nice to be here I'll be very frank with y'all I literally go under the knife in 24 hours the doctor told me not to drink or do anything I'll be honest I'm on cough pills you're going under the knife what are they what are they doing cutting out the AIDS what are they doing to me I have I'm I'm gonna repeat this I'm literally I've been way too fat for probably 15 years now I'm Getting a liposuction uh, procedure in 72 hours. Wait, 72? So what are you doing? What are you doing in 24 hours? Yeah. (laughs) What's what do you say? You're in the knife in 24. I'm going to a Wendy's, and I I was excited when I heard you were on the show tonight. (laughs) Yeah. Can I ask you to go to Wendy's with me tomorrow? I a hundred percent. Can you stand beside me for a second? Wait a second. I always have to get up. What's this happening, always requires William? Me to William, why do you always bother the guests? Yeah, we can what's, stand together. What's happening here? Let's just pretend like we're at the Wendy's. Uh, we're both about to go under the knife in less than 24 hours. 
we've yeah. gotten to be really good friends, yes. sort of, with me touring with you and yes. just all that comes with that. Yeah, that's not happening. Uh, but <laughs> are you really going to mess us up like No, I, so we're at a Wendy's, and I love you. Uh, <laughs> I get a Dave's Double. You get a single. I have the app on my phone. <laughs> William, are you just describing the scene, or is there going to be one? I like Wendy's. I oh. Wait, is that it? It's a girl. Wendy's in the 90s was great, but it's lost a lot of steam. What are you it's talking about? Oh, geez. I knew you'd wake Red Band up. I with don't your know if y'all up. are uh, people who invest in the stock market. Look up Wendy's. They're... Okay. William, why did you have Tim stand up? He always does this to me. I think it's... it's it, I, I respect it. You know? It's a power move. <laughs> so are you... It really cool is. Up? Just me going into the doctor's office, you're the doctor, and just you telling me I actually do have strep throat. You want me to diagnose you with strep throat? Are you cool with that? Is the doctor's office also a Wendy's? It is. <laughs> yeah, sure. That's where he okay. meets his doctor. Okay, so you're at the Wendy's. Yeah. You just ordered food, and you're about to yeah. tell him he has strep throat. And action. Malcolm? It's William. William? <laughs> Sorry. I, the old one. I forget. The old one. <laughs> I'm sorry, I forgot. That's the other one. We're going to take the it from one. the top. We're going to take that it from the top. I apologize. I apologize. You know sorry. what, Dan, Dan, I'm just I'm thinking of what I want to get at Wendy's when I leave. Danny, uh, are you up there? Maybe we could single spot this scene. Let's take it from the top. Hey, Red uh, Band, so you do just, you have MIA paper planes? No, you, th- you don't need paper planes to come <laughs> in at the end of this. No, we don't, need, we don't need music at all. They're at Wendy's. It's a doctor's office. William, Go ahead. thank you for coming. Tim. I'll I'll be very honest. My my st- stomach started hurting a couple weeks ago. I did yeah. some research. My throat was hurting as well. I've been terrified. I have strep throat. Wait, that's why I'm here. I trust you. You have that eye patch you always wear. You have it. I can't believe it. Can you really not? Well, uh, <laughs> As a medical professional who operates out of a Wendy's <laughs> with an eye patch, you know you're my only patient. And so it's not that I root for you to be sick, but I like seeing you. So uh, I'm glad you came in today. Uh, you do live here. So uh, I'm going to just go ahead without a test and say you probably do have strep throat and potentially also HIV. Um, wow. Two years so the ago, prescription for told. that is uh, baked potato and chili, which we make by taking the used up uh, hamburger meat uh, and putting it in, which is not sanitary, but it is tasty. And that is where I picture just literally MIA paper planes plant. Just yeah, I got to be honest. The fact that we don't have paper on the planes, edge of a fucking bridge. Yeah, it ruined jumping the bit. Off. It ruined the bit. No paper planes. Thanks a lot. Uh... <laughs> Let's give it up for Dave Thomas. How do we Hell look? How do we look more homeless than the band? <laughs> they spent an hour trying to look homeless. We just stood up. Wow! All How right, about a hand you. for uh, Tim Dillon? That was incredible, Tony. I know it's against the rules. Yeah. I think I've said it all two times, just repeating the Squirrel album joke. And I say, I feel like Tim likes it. I love the joke. It's my best thing. Family Channel has me just notched in on an episode of Rescue 911 because of it. Are you trying to be... Let me ask you a question. (laughs) This look here tonight, I'm noticing something. Are you trying to be the first male comedian to do a pregnant special? Yeah. You know, Burt Kreischer already did two of those. Hey, Tony, I'm pregnant. <laughs> Wait, how, how did you get pregnant, William? Tell me about it. There was a dude uh, in the Philippines I met. Yeah? He what? seemed really nice. I told him I appear that I'm a male, but I actually have ovaries. Where are the ovaries located? Sort of in my tummy area. I feel like that's why I wore this shirt so tonight. Where, where, I'm literally pregnant. Where did he, <laughs> Yeah, where did he... If they're in your tummy, where did he put his penis? Uh, it was uh, behind a lady's footlocker. No, uh, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Can you play that a little longer? Because this is what I... You love that song. Wait, oh my God, he's dancing. Whoa! We've never seen William dance. 
in any of his appearances, he does some type of like sick robot dance. Wow. This is incredible. Wow, he just went still. It's like he's it's like he's on some type of turnstile. Who is that bitch in the back not laughing? <laughs> what the fuck is going on? I'm pouring my heart and soul out tonight. Are you Persian? Whoa, whoa, William, William. Why do you go straight to Persian? What do you I tried out for Aladdin. I didn't make a <laughs> What part? It, what role in Aladdin? I lived in the sewers. I'll be very honest. I don't tell a bunch of people that. I almost drowned a couple times. You live in sewers? Yeah, I've literally been in the sewers. <laughs> looking for food, looking for my aunt, wondering where my uncle is, wondering where my Monopoly board is. I love that game. Ventnor Avenue? Okay. William's having Monopoly flashbacks here. Uh, Mediterranean, no thanks. <laughs> no thanks? You don't like to slum it up sometimes? Well, too many Hispanics. Whoa, my God. You have attacked Persians and Hispanics. Phil, what do you think about that? Honestly, I spaced out. I was thinking about my secretary when that <laughs> happened. <I don't> <laughs> All right, William. Well, another very fun set. You're absolutely so different. And I just crazy. want to say one last thing. Literally, I haven't been on YouTube in eight fucking months. Yeah. There is that piece of shit, Cracker Barrel Kid, 55, literally going to my parents' house when I accidentally gave out the address. He went there? What He's did he do? He's been playing Ring and Run. He's been rolling their trees in toilet paper. My father is very sick. He has Lyme's disease. Big hiker got bit by a tick. <laughs> tick? <laughs> my goodness. I can't, but well, what, what would you like to say to Cracker Barrel Kid if he's watching tonight? What I would like to say is... I think it'd be cool if you and I could meet. I feel like maybe we'd like one another. I think maybe we would enjoy one another songs choices. I think Wait, what? We would what about song choices? I Wait, just picture maybe Did you maybe just find MIA paper planes for the first time last week? Here's what scares me. One the last thing I'll say, I'm trying to play it cool saying this right now, but the amount of terror he's wreaked on my life, just in my fantasy world, I have a pistol in my hand, and I kick in his fucking bedroom door and just shoot him a bunch of times. You're talking about Cracker Barrel Kid 55, a, a troll on YouTube that comments on all your videos. Okay. <laughs> Well, thank How about one more girl. time for the great William Montgomery, huh? <laughs> this has been a fun show. What do you Let's have some fun right now. Uh, this is a set that I can always count on, that I always know is going to go good. We've always had regulars on this show. Uh, they're blowing up, all of them. I'm so excited about this one. A very unorthodox style of improvisational, um, extreme stand-up comedy. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you one of my favorite top young rising comedians in the world from Memphis, Tennessee, the great and powerful William Montgomery. Here he goes. Here he is. Live in the flesh, William lights out Montgomery. I have never stolen that much food from a Kmart before. That is something I said to a police officer two weeks ago before I went to jail. Alexa, play, I work at a Kmart, and all my coworkers are talking shit, and I swear to God, if they don't stop, I'm going to come back into this fucking Kmart with an AK-47 and shoot everyone. Hey, William, just say hi to people this time. That's an impression of my mother whenever we're at the grocery store. <laughs> Alexa, play I work at a Kmart, and I swear to God, if my coworkers don't stop talking shit, I'm going to come up in there with some Speedo goggles and an AK-47 and kill everyone. 
Fuck yeah. He did it again, William Montgomery, using some of this week's topical subject matter. Too soon? I don't think so. Never. I don't think so. That's incredible. You're so. really attacking the uh, the news of the week, William. Uh, I uh, I started watching NBC. I have a distant uncle who has a lot of stock options in that. Let's go NBC. I don't know if y'all are familiar uh, with The Grudge. That's a movie that NBC sponsored. It's a great horror movie. Uh huh. I find you fucking offensive. Okay. To come on stage in sandals? I don't give a shit about mass shootings, but to talk, come on stage at the comedy show. I have set. hammer toe. You have hammer toe? What? I have hammer toe. What is that? What, what, William, can you... That's one of the reasons I'm going back up in that Kmart. William, can you explain to us all? I've never heard of hammer toe before. What is that? How does that happen? <laughs> Well, it, it started 10 years ago. I was working at the zoo in Memphis, Tennessee. I was working in the aquarium area. Wore aqua socks a bunch. Uh, aqua socks? Aqua socks what a bunch. What are those? It's a, uh, Aqu- it's a shoe one can... Keep going. One wears in a lake or a stream. Um, aqua okay. socks. Yeah, okay, so you're wearing aqua socks, and then what happened? How do you get And then toe? probably five weeks later... Uh, I I finally took them off for the first time, and I looked down at my toes, <laughs> and literally my big toe on my right foot looked like a hammer. <laughs> <laughs> so you kept the aqua socks on for five weeks straight? I did. I didn't know what to do. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Those are the shoes with toes? Yeah. See, what scares me is if you were working in that Kmart and I had those Uzis, I had my, my Speedo goggles on, and you asked me that, I'll be quite frank, I think I would spare you. I would be so horrified. I'd be like, no, these aren't the five fingers. They're aqua socks, and I think both of us would laugh, and, <laughs> and I would just resume down maybe the aisle uh, where the fish are just with my Uzi spraying bullets. Wow. Uh, And don't ask what's in my knapsack uh, because it's pipe bombs. Is that true? You have pipe bombs in there? It's pretty true. It's pretty true? It's pretty true. I looked up a a diagram uh, I love it. All you do is smash, William. How's life been going? What else has been going on this past week? Been pretty good. Hanging out with that girl. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Still doing some acid. Yeah. Still looking at her in the face. Just thinking, oh, my God, I think I like... I've, I'll be honest. I have, I've been lonely for 10 years. I've only ever had one girlfriend. Met this one young lady. She seems nice. Uh, but yeah, tripping on acid, just thinking I have to pee, just in her bedroom. Her grandparents are on the other side of the door. Is that true? It is true. The, she, she lives with her grandparents? She does. And that's where you go to hook up with her? You go to the grandparents' house? When you say hook up, I hope you all realize just sort of a, a scene, maybe MIA paper planes <laughs> playing. <laughs> Her putting on a surgical plastic, whether it be plastic, whether it be just some sort of plastic material, just, yeah, please, thank yep. you. Just her putting those on, me taking Wait, two what squirts type of, plastic? of liquid Hold on, acid. William, William, you've got to slow it down. You just said plastic material. Where is she putting the plastic material? She is slowly whispering in my ear, it's not saying, the question William, I you... So, Go ahead. Just do your thing, William. William, you seem so nice. I'm open to putting uh, one of my fingers around your bottom. Oh. And And she says that, and I'm tripping, and I look at her, and I get the pistol that I carry in my backpack, and I put it up to her head, and I'm just like, bitch, I swear to God, I'm on fucking edge. If you say that shit again. Hey. All right. 
Wow. William, you are quite the artist. Um, it is incredible, your style and what you're able to accomplish. I did want to say, I, I looked y'all up. Y'all do the conspiracy theory things. Yep. What about the people on that airplane that hit one of the towers in New York? What about their... Did that really happen or not? What is the deal with that? Wait, what? What's up with that? What kind of question is that, William? Planes? What planes? Just one of the planes that hit one of the buildings in New York City. Uh huh. Just what Why, is, is that? The when government? did that happen? 1974. Oh, okay. that one you're talking about. Oh, that. Okay. That really I hope happened. Y'all are taking notes. That is where, if you are are totally realizing you've made a horrible mistake, and they're like, "Oh, when say 1974." <laughs> wow, that acid is. R- r- uh, ruining your life, William. So you've been having sex with this girl that you found. Sexual intercourse? On acid with a gun to her head. Yeah, but you bet you've been putting your wiener inside of her little toot toot? Her little uh, lady I, heart? I have not said any name. I'll be very frank. I'm playing the pullout game, which I've never done before. What does the pullout game mean to you? What do you? It do? entails... Me and her being side by side, MIA paper planes yeah. blaring. Yeah. Blaring. What about the grandparents? So they, they don't mind that song? I'll be very honest, sort of in the heat of the moment, I whisper in her ear. Yeah. And I'll change names here, but I'll just be like, hey, I think Scott is listening. Wait. <laughs> whose name is that? The grandparents? And it scares me, and then I stop, and then I think I've been smoking and drinking too much. My penis is not working how it used to. Yeah, how's and it, that scares how's me. How's it working now? How's it? Does it have hammer, hammer toe? Yeah, does it, it work? works. Just me being beside her, just sort of fantasizing about being in a Kmart, maybe a couple Uzis. Okay. Uh, hey, William. There he does goes. It, when you hear the Hispanic same thing people, twice, that means that the interview's over. Well, ladies and gentlemen, once again, the great cool, William you. Montgomery. You know, if I was starting stand-up comedy now, I would fucking hate that guy. Yeah, I, he, sure. would, he would infuriate me. <laughs> just the way he just fucking improvises and gets laughs. I would like to watch him fuck. Tony, you should, I want to see the the, yeah. the, the, the the comments that I read on this guy. Like it's like he doesn't even do jokes. Like these idiots. It's like, well, just kill then, you fucking idiot. Tony, just kill every week. Good luck. Tony. Next guy's first time on the show because he's the regular on this show. Every single week, he writes and performs a brand new minute. Uh, he is so fun, so silly. He has a. Uh, Different style than everybody else, sort of just lies the entire time. Uh, master improviser, I would say. And uh, very fun. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you one of my favorite comedians. Put your hands together for William Montgomery, everyone. Here he is, live, in the flesh. Lights out, William Montgomery. Here he is, everyone. I uh, I smoked a little weed earlier, and right afterwards, I was like, no thanks. What is this, K2 Spice? Where are we, the Philippines? I don't get it. Why are people looking Asian, yet they're talking in a Spanish accent? Uh, if I end up having a daughter, I want her to get involved in beauty pageants. I feel like the best age age group for that is three to five. That's where you can really sort of put it put on the makeup how you like you can really dress them up how you like um, they don't ask if it's Pantene Pro-V you're putting in their hair uh, even though it's white rain coconut Those internal clocks can be... A William, is that... You have something else you want to say? I do. I wrote it... Uh... <laughs> have y'all ever seen a nine-year-old cry? 
That's uh, an impression of my cousin Richard Whooping Cough when he told us boys he actually has Whooping Cough. Um, and he actually gave my daughter Whooping Cough, so now she's not in the pageants anymore. She. Oh, that's a callback. William Montgomery, everybody. Here he is. This is it. <laughs> Big J. I'm that was a weird pause yeah. at the end. <laughs> I thought for a second you realized that you were here performing in your boxers. <laughs> yeah. Really is definitely wearing underwear that has, <laughs> seems to have pockets in it. Underwear with pockets. I got these in You just went, Christ, I am I not wearing pants? At, it's literally the only thing I wrote down during that set is the word underwear. Uh, I didn't want to forget to acknowledge the fact that you are wearing underwear. We've seen neck braces. We've seen unicorn horns. We've seen a lot of different things from you, but underwear, this is a first. Why are you in your underwear, I William? wear these at the strip club down in Destin, Florida. Weirdly oh. enough, my name is Unicorn Horns. Uh, down in Destin, I sell a bunch of people Advils. I act like they're... You they're, sell Advils on just the black market? I do. Literally Craigslist. What are your thoughts about Advil being available over the counter? <laughs> it scares me. It gives people kidney problems. I had a uh, a a close relative, uh, Pat, Pat, second cousin. She died yeah. of of complications with her liver due to Advil. So it's what was she taking Advil for in the first place? She had something wrong with her teeth. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Yeah, there's a thing, I don't know if y'all have ever heard of this thing called cavities. It's if you don't brush your teeth. Yeah, we've heard of that before for sure. That's a very common thing. She had cavity. I just want to give it up for my my really good friend, Ralph Martinez in the Advocare jersey. Can you raise up your hand, please? Oh, he's giving it. Oh, Ralph wow. Ralph is visiting us right now from the Philippines. Ralph, how are you? Wow, you actually know that guy. You've done this before with a, with a human that you didn't know at all. You told him to stand up and take a bow, and you just kept yelling at him until he did. Uh, but that you, is that true? You're actually Ralph Martinez from the Philippines? I've never heard of a Martinez from the Philippines before. Yeah, ask, from Ralph, the Philippines? ask Ralph how old he is. Ralph, how old are you? 35. <laughs> wow. Why, why, is, that, why, is that bizarre? Why is that so funny to you, William? Just because we used to work, it's a bit we've been working on. I, I understood a lot of people wouldn't get it, but it, Ralph, that was really good. We've literally we we've been part. working on that shit for three years. We were uh, in New Mexico for two of those years. We slept in the same bed together. Oh, wow. Did you guys ever uh, snug or anything like that? You snuggle up with one another? Well, I was trying to before I heard him talk in his sleep, and he was talking about my my relative Pat about what was he saying just get that bitch out of this hotel room I'm sick of her being here and I was just like Ralph Martinez I get it we have a really strong connection but she got here from Memphis Tennessee it's a long drive she's not going to be able to get back and oh, oh my Ralph goodness. started poisoning her oh Really? Maybe that's how she got the cavities that eventually killed her. Have you ever thought about that? that that's you're, what you're... I'm thinking. Hold on, Ralph. How old are you again? 35. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, just, I don't understand. Well, I don't really get it, William. How, let me ask you this. How long have you and Ralph been working on this bit? We have been doing this shit, what, 20 years? How 20 old are you years. again, Ralph? Can I tell you something? I bet I, my guess is, how old are you again, William? I am 42 on a good <laughs> day. A I play a lot of Monopoly. Uh, I didn't want to bring this up again. Uh, yeah. If I am playing Monopoly and someone lands on Ventnor Avenue before I do, I, I get enraged. Yeah, what does that sound like? Just, hold on, Ralph, why the fuck are you playing Ventnor Avenue, you know that's my space. We've been in this hotel room for five months. <laughs> we become really good friends and you're building a, a house on Vit... <laughs> why, were, why, why were you and Ralph in a hotel for five months together? It is a long story. We met on AOL. We... You've got 
decided to start talking. He decided to show me the Ouija board. I decided I On enjoyed. AOL? Yeah, he showed you it. When we met up, he decided, he was like, hey, William, play the Ouija board. I was like, I believe in Jesus Christ. He was like, I don't care. We can speak to spirits on this. And I think that's where we discovered that joke of, hey, yeah. hold on, how old are you? 35. So, like, you guys, you guys are playing the Ouija board, and my guess is that the little piece went over the number three and the number five, and then you, d- you did that bit for 20 years? And then I say, I caramba, you have to stop doing that. We're not in Juarez anymore. Juarez, that's in Mexico, not the Philippines, where Martinez's are usually from. I'll be very honest. It was, it was very nice to see you out in the crowd tonight. I, I felt lost. I have been really deep on some experimental drugs, hallucinogens. I've been walking the streets, but when I saw you tonight, it sort of gave me some more confidence. I'll be honest, my stomach hurts right now. I don't know if it's because of all the Advil. I don't know if it's because How of many Advil did you take today? If I'm going to be honest, I would say, I don't know, five or six. Wh- why are you taking Advil? I have been having these horrible headaches... I, okie dokie. Uh, there you go. If you're wondering how long it can last, it's that long. Uh, anything else for William, guys? He's in his underwear. I, uh, I'm impressed. I, I don't <laughs> know. I have no idea it, what just happened the past five that, minutes. Yeah, it's all, it's all. A I lie. do know that 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 guy is 35. It's a, it's all a chance for us to sit back and remember how great pot in Los Angeles is. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there he so, is. Forget your pants good. Because, uh, I'm, I'm horribly <laughs> on edge right now. I worry about my father, Larry Montgomery, watching this episode tonight, texting me in the morning, being like, William, uh, Mom and I loved it. Other than you being far too high, we didn't get, get the, the joke. Hold on. How old are you again? Oh, my goodness. 35, bitch. <laughs> For those of you just listening, uh, or maybe you can't see on the camera, on that one, the guy actually shook his head no. And he refused <laughs> to answer. 20 years, he finally just re- retired the bed. It's over. Live. In the comedy store of all places to work on. Yeah, I mean, I have a lot riding on this. And you, you start now fucking with me. You've said that. I was on Rescue 911. You were? Yeah, I was an ambulance driver. Uh, early 90s, Philippines, I had a lot of cases with arrows, people getting hit in the arm with arrows. Okie dokie. Um, how, about, uh, how about one more time, good and loud for William right, Montgomery, you, everybody. <laughs> there he is. Uh, there is a regular on this show. He... Writes and performs a brand new 60 seconds every single week. He's consistently funny. He has a defined style to him. He's a little bit wacky and different than other comedians. I present to you one of my favorite comics to watch every week on this show. Put your hands together for William Montgomery, everyone. (laughs) William Montgomery getting a big ovation here. I uh, I shit my pants the other day. <laughs> Luckily, I was at home last night. However, I wasn't so lucky. I work at a Chili's. I <laughs> what's the deal with the Twilight Zone? <laughs> See, that scares me. There weren't more laughs. With that was the punchline. I uh... <laughs> oh god. Um... Watch it, kid! <laughs> That's my impression of the taxi driver in Home Alone 2. <laughs> What's the deal with Gilligan's Island? I am so sorry. Tony told me if the set doesn't go good tonight, I'm off as the regular. I have a lot of pressure on me tonight. I have a lot of pressure on my small toe. 
Heck yeah, out there in exactly 60 seconds, William Montgomery. Who told you that I said that? Uh, a good friend, Zane Heichel. He's part Iranian, part Minthian. Uh, really good at mathematics. His brother's really good at English. Where'd you meet this guy? In high school. Oh. And he told you that Tony told him that if you don't do good this week, you're off the show? He did. And I'll be quite frank, I don't get why Zane Heichel told me that. I literally got the news this past week that my buddy Tony Chin was potentially on that 737 Max crash in Africa. (laughs) So Tony Chin may be dead? I am worried Tony Chin is dead. I had a bunch of stock options with him. (laughs) With him? In the (laughs) Hubba Bubba uh, uh, gum. Hubba Bubba the gum? Yeah, it's it's a it's part of the gum industry. It's a it's a guy, Tony Chin. He's Asian. If we're gonna get down to it, he was he was pretty much a what was that fucking noise? <laughs> Don't throw me off, William. dude. You dress and talk like a molested boy. <laughs> Ten years ago, I was in Atlanta, Georgia. (laughs) There was this manager guy. His name was actually named Tony Chin as well. Weirdly enough, I found myself in a bathroom. He touched my butthole. Oh, my goodness. I didn't know what to do. We've never talked about this before, William. He touched your butthole? Touched my butthole. Why? The stall was out of toilet. I don't know. I was wearing an eye patch at the time. You had an eye patch. Over your butthole? Over my butthole and over my right eye. Wow. Uh, I had... So what, what, did you do? What, what did you do when he touched your butthole? I looked him in the face. I looked back and I said, please, I sort of like you. Just take it slow. <laughs> Let me have some fun as well. I have hammer toe. I can't really get on the tips of my toes. So what did you? What did you do? You wanted to have some fun as well. What did you? What did you? What did you what did Don't you? repeat this. But I, I took a slurp out of my Coca Cola icy, and I looked back at him, blinked out of my left, and I was like, "Go to town if you want to." I have to be honest with you. I am in fact HIV positive. <laughs> I have two years to live. Is that true? Yeah. Who told you this? Zane? Zane did not. Tony, Tony and I also have stock in Kinex. I don't know if y'all remember Kinex. It's a, a Lego offshoot. Um, you talking about me or Tony Chin? I'm actually talking about my second cousin, Patricia. How'd you get here? Oh, this is a new thing we've noticed lately where William sometimes will accuse someone in the audience of being somebody. (laughs) You're saying this is your second cousin, Patricia, right here? This young lady in the very front row? Patricia, how are you? (laughs) I've been watching you since I got on stage. You have not been laughing. It's my final Kill Tony set. I've been having fun. I look down at your face just seeing a big scowl. It really throws... What can you tell us about your cousin Patricia? Is there anything uh, interesting about her? Any fun facts? Do you have any history with her? Nine years ago in Atlanta, Georgia, we were in a uh, a Connect Four tournament. Uh, she she cheated a little bit. We were in a a single room apartment building, sort of in the ghetto, if you want to call it that. That's what you called it. Just cheating somehow at Connect Four to this day. I don't know how you do that. The guy was like, hold on, what are y'all fucking doing in here? She pulled out a pistol. I pulled up my eye patch, winking, just like, hold on, it's all right. (laughs) William, you just got a little bit lost in the eyes of Luis J. Gomez there. Uh, 
What do you? What, what, what happened? What, what happened when you looked directly? Lewis, in his what eyes? throws me off is I was so looking forward to Skank Fest. You never gave me the invitation. <laughs> that's not true at all. That's what just the simply, fuck, Lewis. That, that's just. I can't do math. <laughs> William, 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 you are a fucking liar. Yeah. You are a liar. You do not lie. We gave you an invite, and you cannot get off your Chili's job to come. That's what happened. Wait, you work at Chili's? No, it's a self-storage unit. <laughs> Called Ch- Chili's. Chili's really seltzer, blooming unit. onions. Uh, it really is. This is Outback an, this is Steakhouse a, this is normally does for, that, but in the storage unit, the yeah, we serve funnier. fajitas. You name it, we do it. I have Q-tips on deck. For what? What do you use the Q-tips for? Just warm water on the Q-tips, just putting them in your eardrums. It's a good feeling. I'll be very honest. When I got the two-year period left that I'm going to live, I got a bunch of (laughs) Q-tips. So, William. um, Shane just left. Yeah, Shane's gone. Uh, you is, really pissed him off, dude. Yeah, something about the Q-tips. Um, Two nights ago, Shane and I got in a really bad flight. A really bad what? Fight on a Delta flight. Yeah. You name it, we were doing it. Budweiser's, Bud Lights, what? Ecstasy Tablets. LSD. This is what you and Shane Gillis were doing? Yeah, I think that's why he left. How did the night end? It ended with a... With a what? I'm kidding. That's a character I'm working on. Just sort of pause it. It ended with both he and I getting thrown off the plane in Atlanta, Georgia. Me not understanding what's going on. Just wondering where Shane went. I can't hear at that point in time. I have an earache. He is on a row ahead of me. I don't know where my head... Let me ask you something. I'm going to stop you there. Now, you're known for your incredible comedy style of just blatantly lying about absolutely everything. A lot of other people, the truth is comedy and this and that, but you seem to be sort of the exception to that rule. Uh, Tony, I'll be very honest. I've been down recently. Yeah. I've been very down. I'm working at the storage unit place. I've been... Fooling around with a young lady, it's been fun. I worry about her talking about her ex-boyfriends because I could never fill those shoes literally and figuratively. I have webbed feet. I can't wear... All right, William. William, do you you ever do, like, anything different outside of what you're comfortable with? Like, you have a formula. Every week, you pretty much, you know... To go off on like you know Applebee's or something, and you do that every week. Is there a different version of your set that like? Do you ever do like you like a, a more traditional set? You have jokes that you you have jokes that you do in a set when stuff matters. I've seen you because this is your last performance here at the Kill Tony show. Can I give y'all a couple of my best jokes? Yeah, N- yeah. I mean, we've, yeah, it, we've it, seen yeah. them. All- We've seen them. So I can get on the show later. I think y'all will like these. Oh, no, 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 no that's no, not no, how it no, works. No, I'm kidding. No. I'm kidding. We escorted Jesus, up. what is the deal with people asking for shit tonight? Hey, Gus. I, uh, I like it when my mom goes out of town because I get to sleep on her side of the bed. Classic. <laughs> Classic. Yeah. We love it. It's great. I, uh, how about I have a friend who's paralyzed from the waist up, which is a blessing because he's a dancer. <laughs> I'm white with black stripes. As the racist zebra. Well, William, uh, those are amazing. We've seen those classics before. Uh, you did it again. You're working hard. You're getting development spots here at the Comedy Store. You have a big manager. I hope I haven't been uh, calling in after you have a, Adam. Okie okay, yeah, dokie. You have a big time manager, band. and things are going good for you. I, I heard a little rumor that you might be showcasing for uh, for the Conan show, right? There's a 
There's oh. a guy named Robert Conan who I hang out no, with no, down in no. the sewers. No, you're lying, William. I'm currently living in the sewers, bunch of There mosquitoes. he goes, William Montgomery, everybody. <laughs> what do you guys think? Should we go to the bucket one more time? <laughs> All right. In part, it is produced. There is one young man who is a regular on this show. Every single week, he writes and performs a brand new minute. He comes from a long history of some great regulars, like uh, the great Sarah Weinshank, who's here. Ali McCoskey, who just spent the weekend opening for Joe Rogan in Denver. The great Kim Congdon, who uh, is a legend and in New York. Ladies and gentlemen, Malcolm Hatchett. Here he is, William Montgomery, everybody. I'm crazy for fear. Here he is. It's William Montgomery. How's it going, y'all? I work for Speedo Goggles. No, but seriously, I uh, have been snorting a bunch of catnip recently. Don't worry, I have a hold on it. I wrote that five years ago. That allowed me to open up for Cat Stevens, the <laughs> guitar player, father and son, will be played during my funeral. <laughs> Missy Elliott taught me that one day if I could escape from the dungeon in the basement of my father's insurance agency, <laughs> if I could put my mind to it, I could become a dancer. Fantasy football tip. Fantasize you're out there playing tackle football with human boys instead of rotting in the dungeon below your father's. You want to finish can it? Can I tell my last joke? Yeah, of course you can. He's got one more. I'm a librarian, damn it! That's an impression of my dad paddling me in the dungeon when I haven't been using my library voice. Wow. All right. Very unorthodox, as usual, per uh, William Montgomery, everybody. There you go. Another new set from William. There's his classic look for approval to the guest. Uh, I'll be quite frank. I'm just pumped about Rosh Hashanah this year. <laughs> William, take a step back so that the people can see you uh, clearly. Um, while you're, so the people can see you, William. So having a stare off with Mr. Fumnar wouldn't be the way to. Uh, I grew up with a man named Rosh Hashanah. His father was Tony Rashana. Uh His grandfather <laughs> was Ralph Rashana. I don't know if I believe any of this. So I'm going to be honest with you. I don't know if I'm buying it. So it just I, kills me. I, I literally, I'm a believer in Jesus Christ. I'm cool with Jewish folks that also believe in Jesus. They're called Messianic Jews. When I was with... There I thought last week was your last episode. I thought... I thought. No, I, I, I didn't know no, this was not, happening. That wasn't a thing at all. What, what he said last week was that I said that if he doesn't do good that week, that he would be done, but that was a complete lie. And what scares me is I'm just feeling the tension of the audience right now. It's going <laughs> really bad. This literally is probably... My last episode. <laughs> I'm going to let y'all in on a secret. I have dreams at night that I remember at times, and there was one with a man named Rosh Hashanah. I was looking <laughs> so the at man him in an elevator. The elevator sort of moves around a little bit, and we end up sort of collapsing in the elevator. And I look at Rosh and... <laughs> Are there, do you, let me ask you this. Have you hung out with a lot of people named after holidays? I have. I'm really uh, good friends with Peter Easter. He is. <laughs> Peter uh, Easter? He's a really nice black man. He's involved in a gang in Memphis, uh, the Bloods. I was with him three years ago. We uh, went around shooting people. Wait a in second. A Target Wait a parking second. Lot. Now, this is a new level that we've never gotten to. Now, your entire comedic style. <laughs> is based heavily on, uh, on um, the, the truth. truth. And so now we're finding out that you shot people. Peter Target, I remember being in his Ford Taurus, a purple Wait a second. version you just said of a Peter Ford Taurus, 
just telling me, William, pull the trigger, don't breathe. I found myself in the passenger seat of that Ford Taurus, passing out, looking up, seeing... My goodness. Who's Peter Target? Hold on. What is going on? Peter, Mr. Fumnar. Peter Easter. Yeah. Peter that Easter was, is a man that started a church outside of Memphis. He was a believer in snakes. Uh, William, oh, that's Mi- right. Mis- he, st- he starred in the movie Good Friday After Next. I remember. He also started uh, that one movie. What is that called? Where the people are out in the desert. It has Kevin Bacon. Tremors. Tremors. Yeah. Okay. So how many people did you and Peter shoot that day? I think in the movie Tremors, the amount of people Peter and I watched from the outskirts of it, sort of winking at them, was maybe 35. I just remember being out in the desert sands holding Peter's hand, <laughs> thinking to myself, I hope this never ends. Hey, Red Band, can you put on MIA Paper Planes? Oh, my goodness. This is, uh, that's not Paper Planes at all. That's not Paper Planes. All right. Here's Cat Stevens. Just picture me being some sort of a plumber type person in Memphis after this comedy thing doesn't work out. I get bit by a spider. I slowly die in the mat. And this song is playing. Red Band shows up and winks at me. And then what happens? I wink back at him. And, th- and then what? I take off my Speedo goggles. They're fog to the max. And and then what? I say to Red Band, Red Band, you were so sweet to me. I'm I'm a simpleton from Memphis moving out to Los Angeles. (laughs) You allow me to put these songs on. And Red Band says, do you believe in Jesus? Dreams may not. Wow. So, uh, Kyle... And I look at Red Band, and I'm like, Red Band, I pray to God you believe in Jesus. I have a bad feeling you don't. I get that you play the Ouija board. I get that you go to Kroger Supermarket. I get that you raised up my son, Vance. I don't understand it, but I get it. Why did you have to wear that wig? Why did I have to wear those shorts? <laughs> and, 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 and then what happens? No, William, uh, hold on. Let's slow it down for a second. So, Kyle, uh, this is, I believe, probably your first time ever seeing William Montgomery perform. Yes. Uh, <laughs> I've never seen him. I like Kyle, him. Kyle, yep. I am a giant fan. You are wonderful. Oh, thank you. At impressions. Thank you. Can you please sort of answer from your gut right now? Is there any way when you are opening up for audiences, maybe they're in the Philippines, maybe they're in South Korea, could I feature for you? Oh, my God. William, you're not allowed to do that. What did I tell you about that? You're not allowed to just ask people on the show if you can open. I'm from the Philippines! (laughs) I was going to ask My right leg goes numb! (laughs) Your wait, 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 your what? I can't feel it! Your left leg? My right sort of, this muscle up, he, oh, it goes numb when I'm eating the foot long. It costs 14 bucks. That's why I got the app. All right. That's incredible, William. My goodness. That, have, you let, have you let a doctor look at that at all? Well, last time I was there, Teresa, how are you doing? Teresa's my aunt. Oh, there you go. She said hello. That it's been confirmed that that is your aim. I was worried when my brother Vance and I were on those train tracks and you got cut in half that you could not be fixed. Nice to see you. Can you stand up and do your shirt up? Can we see those stitches? <laughs> no, you don't, don't. Don't make her show her stitches, William. This has been a pretty common thing the last few weeks. I've noticed that you recognize somebody from the audience as a family member and you ask them to uh, stand up or say hello or something like that. And uh, normally it's just simply never the person who you say it is. And it's I feel r- like the only reason I bring it up when I was talking about the movie Tremors, I don't know if y'all remember the scene in that movie where they're up in the water tower, but I was in fact up there. I was messing around with my pistol 
I was learning how to shoot it, learning how to pull the trigger, learning how to aim. She came up there with me. She was like, William, how are you doing it? So, so nice to see you. And I just promise, it's so, so nice to see you right now. You have really thrown me off. I'm worried about the text message I'm going to get from my father, Larry, tomorrow. He's going to be like, is William, is you need to write more. <laughs> is that the aunt from that side, your father's side? It is. I also have an aunt uh, from my mom's side, uh, my my grandmother, B. Vance. I was her favorite, actually. Okie dokie, William, I'm going to cut you off there. I uh, really don't have the... Uh, uh, momentum here. Now, you've been um, having uh, sexual relations with a young woman as of late, right? And that's sort of a newer thing for you. Is that correct? Y'all just picture me just maybe at a Laser Quest arena bathroom, just <laughs> living it up. Maybe my name is Arnold Schwarzenegger. Maybe William, my name did is you hear Predator the, William, over here. Did you hear the question that I just asked you at all? <laughs> like, at all? I have been trying my hardest to when I feel like I'm about to ejaculate pulling my <laughs> penis outside of her body and just praying to God she doesn't rub her thighs on my thing because it gets sensitive I don't understand hey, yes you you are describing pulling out William <laughs> yeah. that is what you are describing <laughs> yeah. I have been having so much fun but I'm looking no, it's okay. Right. You don't, yeah, William. Okay, so you've been hooking up with a lady for the first time in a long time. Uh, Weinshank, you, you see a stud like William. you have any advice for him to uh, maybe... Hey, Weinshank, I'll be very frank. Uh-oh. You and I having that development spot, getting on shows together, there have been points and times I've looked at you just wondering what you asked for. For Rosh Hashanah. Okie dokie. <laughs> uh, this, is a, uh, this is a wacky, wacky William Montgomery appearance. But I will say this, is that I did a show on Friday, uh, Tony Hinchcliffe and Acquaintances. That? And uh, I have to say that out of almost every single comedian on that lineup that night, um, it was mind-boggling how great of a set William what Montgomery had. Lines I know that a I lot had. of you... William, my William, set, it William, was fun. William, William. That's not, you can't just start talking whenever the fuck you want. I mean, I have no idea what's that. Are you okay? Are you, f- like, you're on a live show right now. And I was in the middle the of complimenting past week, you. When I try to go to sleep, if I go to sleep on my back, I have these dreams where I can't breathe. Yeah. And I literally wake up and I'm not breathing. Yeah, William, he was trying to compliment you, and you interrupted for a weird riff. Yeah, it's very <laughs> bizarre. He was Getting building you up, and then you're like, no, 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 but yeah. this riff that's not going to yeah, work real right. quick. <laughs> In one of your longest interviews ever where uh, really like there's just hasn't been a butt ton of momentum behind it. It's not exactly, I think, I, w- I, would, I would say this isn't exactly your crowd. Um, so why would you come back this week? Well, Brian, uh, you're trying I to like make up a storyline that was never a storyline. <laughs> Way too much confidence this episode, Red Band. Um, let's just keep that the show forward so present fun. show moving. Fuck! Because you keep show bringing it so up. What are you talking we about? Went over that, you keep going back. Well, to I this think it's thing. a good idea. He brought up a good the idea. The show last was week. so it fun, y'all. I'll be quite frank. Probably one of my best lines I had during the show. In between Wait. killer jokes, I said, "Yeah, I'm single. I'm holding out for a black or an oriental." There you go. That was a joke. Look at that. Mr. Fumnar. Oh, yes, Kyle Dunnigan just gave your set two blinks up. <laughs> you oh, can boy. only use Oriental in regards to a rug in 2019. Last day check. Hey, Sarah, I'll be very honest. Oh, there oh. was a point in time before I started hanging out with the school. I had a big crush on oh, But I'll shit. be quite frank. You saying that right now it really <laughs> throws me off. I've been <laughs> killing it tonight. All right. You talk about... All right, William Montgomery had uh, fun times. There he goes, everybody. He might not be back next week, according to some Nothing Burger storyline that was never a thing in the first place. There he goes, William Montgomery. We have a regular on this show, as a lot of you may know. He's uh, 
He's uh, either love him or hate him type of uh, character. I, I absolutely love him. I think he's a machine. He rolls with everything. He has a very defined, distinct style of stand-up comedy. I love watching him do a brand new minute every single week. So let's see what it is this week. I present to you the great William Montgomery. Here he is, live, in the flesh. The one, the only. Bright red beard. Here he is, William Montgomery. I'd, uh, I'd like to give a brief moment of silence to Millie Vanilli's uh, Rob Anderson. He uh, tragically died on this day, Labor Day. It's a dark time for me. I uh, recently got fired from QVC, something about they were pretty sure I was addicted to heroin and lived in a tree. <laughs> I'm going to be passing out my DJ cards later, uh, my DJ name is Rob Anderson's Millie Vanilli Experience colon featuring William Montgomery, comma, he's not that sick, period. <laughs> so I've been having a bunch of cat parties recently. I, I take acid and round up all the neighborhood cats up into my apartment. Um, just looking at them, wondering who they are. Uh, I'd like to give you maybe a little cut scene of that. Uh, Are you going to do the... Is there more to that? Oh, hello, sir. Are you a cat? There he is. Eddie. That's what you're like at the cat party? Cat party. There he is, the look of approval. He's absorbing Miss Pat's energy, trying to get a read on her. Uh, he I always. I'm excited to see Miss Pat. We were in uh, Ashley Simpson's first music video. What was that 20 years ago? You, <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my goodness. <laughs> I started to believe that motherfucker. I was like, what? Oh, wow. It was 20 years ago. We met for the first time. I was like, hey, my name is William. She was like, hey, my name is Miss Pat. And she was like, fuck you. Quit. Wow. <laughs> William Montgomery, we've seen your Jedi mind tricks work on a great many comedians, but uh, I don't think uh, you, you got Miss Pat there. No, he don't. I don't even like gingers. <laughs> <laughs> they burn too easy. I don't fuck with y'all. <laughs> Is that true? Weirdly enough, yeah, two weeks ago I was at a campfire with some buddies, and I got a little too close, and I... I'm I, talking about the sun. Yeah. Oh, whoa, oh, oh. whoa. Sunburn. You got sunburn from a campfire? <laughs> I did. It was really bad. I think I have uh, a carcinoma. Wow. How true is this cat party thing? Everyone knows you're a very honest comedian. How many times have you had a cat party before? It has been literally the past two months. It's been five times, normally on Tuesdays. I literally just take some squirts of this acid. I literally go out in the neighborhood... Just see the cats, round them up. With how do you? Net. How do you? Hold on. How do you round up the cats? What do you do? Can you give us an example of what that's like? I have a net. It's a Wait, uh, what? Similar I, to a fishing net. I just trap them in the net. I'm sweating really bad. You ever bust I'm vomiting. A net? I'm I'm tripping on the sidewalk. But I get probably ten to fifteen just Whoa. during the cat parties. That's a lot of cats to catch in a net. Has anybody ever seen you do it? Yeah, my neighbor, a really nice man, uh, Ralph Martinez. What did he? What did? He, what did Ralph say when he saw you? He was like, "William, why do you have all those cats? William, why are your pupils so huge? <laughs> William, why are you sweating? William, where are your clothes? William, where's your net? Why don't you have your net? William, what's in that bag? William, what are those cats? William, what's go? What's going on? And I'm just like, Ralph, relax." W wow. Okay. Come to the party at 8. <laughs> My goodness. What, what the fuck are you guys eating? Cats? What are we eating? Have you ever heard of uh, Easy Cheese? <laughs> How much? It's the cheese you squirt out of a bottle. We eat that with Ritz crackers. We have uh, Hold on, you Captain's and... Wafers. We have all you... kinds of crack. You and the cats? Crack? You giving the cats crack? <laughs> That's a black person drug. You giving the cats crack? How much crack have you been giving the cats, William? Two weeks ago, there was this very sweet cat. 
Um, stop telling jokes and talk to us, goddamn it. <laughs> <laughs> can't stop it. Turn your ass around and talk to us, you weird ass ginger. Turn around. <laughs> you I'm need to so start checking you people's mental tripping. health before you bring you, them up here. <laughs> Have, you, have any of the cats ever misbehaved with you or done anything out of line? Yeah, there's this one, uh, What's Edward his name? Francis. He's a really nice guy. He's from Memphis, Tennessee. We went to high school together. Wait, um, you went to high school with a cat? Yes, he was really smart. He had an <laughs> eye patch. Um, really sweet guy. He was Armenian. Um, Wait, it's an Armenian cat. Armenian cat? Yeah. And Wait. I'll be honest, keep that song playing, please. Y'all just remember, just when I die, I currently have hypertension. I currently eat Luden's cough drops too much. But I promise y'all this, during my funeral, as this is playing, Cat Stevens' father and son, I just pray to God that one cat, Edward Francis, just sees me in that coffin and starts crying. (laughs) Wait a second. Why would the Armenian cat that you went to high school with be at your funeral and start crying? Because we got along a lot. We started playing board games. Um, and, 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 and how would he see you at your funeral? He would be, you're planning on having an open casket funeral? How would he get casket? there? How would he get there? He would get in his Ford tour. Uh, all right. Anything else exciting Can happening? Can you do that one more time, Red Man? Any- oh, oh, look at shit, this. Man. Wow. <laughs> We've heard rumors of William having sexual relations lately, and I think it's really showing. Look at this. Wow. (laughs) Goldie. (laughs) Goldie, hit another step, boy. Go. What'd you just fucking say? (laughs) Wait, whoa. William, what happened? I'm having fun. You better get this crazy ass crap. <laughs> William, I've never seen you have any rhythm like that before. Is it only to that song? Is it that, is. Is this, like this a, is. is this like Weekend at Bernie's? Only that one song makes you move like that? <laughs> wow. Oh my goodness. I feel like, I feel like with moves like that, you could win a dance Red competition. Red man, keep playing it! Oh my God! Turn the lights down! William, no! All right, all right. Wait, what was that? What was that move? Okay, play it some more. What was that? All right, all right, all right. Okay. My I was gonna dance with you, but I think you crazy. <laughs> Jesus Christ, where you get these people from? I didn't learn how to spell in the third grade. So, yeah, there are certain people that say I'm crazy. I ended up working at a Kmart for five years. I didn't know how to read the... Wow. William, are you married? (laughs) No. I'm not, no. (laughs) Why is that funny? Uh. (laughs) Is there a licensed gun owner here I can hang out with? <laughs> well, William, you did it again. Another fun new minute, another fun appearance. Uh, Thank you so much. Jesus fun times. Christ. The great William Montgomery. There he goes. The great William.